Yeah, you're on the Hillbilly Voodoo channel. Today we're going to figure out how we're going to drive this bug out buggy that we're building, our ultimate off-road ATV, Sherp, fat truck style vehicle here with a really small engine. Stick around, see what type of hillbilly voodoo and what type of poking we're going to have to do to get this thing to, well, to be powered by a motor. So for those of you that have been following along on this project, you know that we have a modified PT Cruiser transaxle mounted in here. We have created a Robson drive out of it. It's going to drive our big, huge hillbilly party balloons. And it's kind of independent. We don't have an engine connected to it. This little yoke right here goes into our clutch and our bell housing. You spin that around, it's just like a motor, but we don't got no motor here. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we're going to try to put the smallest motor that we can in here, most fuel efficient, to power this machine. So before we even decide what engine we're going to put in here, I know I'm going to drive that flange right there, not with a drive shaft or anything, but with a sprocket and chain drive motorcycle engine i can use the chain drive off of the well off the motorcycle or the rototiller engines i can go with a centrifugal clutch and power the clutch that's in there yeah that kind of makes sense makes sense in my head so what do i got around here that i can well i need a sprocket for once so let's go poke around in our piles of ground obtainium out here and see what we can find. Now, I usually keep all my sprockets and chains and stuff really close to the shop here. So when it snows, I don't have to go digging around too much. But we do have a motorcycle right there. And I'm pretty sure that's got a sprocket on the back wheel. This is one of the engines that I'm thinking about using. 400 CM Honda and well that's the sprocket that's on there and that is like super highway speed small sprocket this is an old chopper project that i had that's been modified over and over and over again and it's never really been all that fun to ride looked really cool but it's kind of a yeah kind of a backbreaker so I pretty much had enough of it as a motorcycle so it can become something else now but anyways that sprocket there is obviously not going to work it's way too small around now there's always crap on the ground here and underneath my little work table here there's always stuff got a flywheel there's a oh there's a sprocket let's go over the other side here Hmm. Yeah, well that's a bicycle sprocket. And that there is a super crusty chain. That is a I believe that's a drive sprocket out of an old snow blower. What else is in there? We got some gears. Another chain that's not super crusty. Oh, that spark is way too small. Well, let's go count the teeth on this one and see what we got. So I sat here and counted the teeth on our sprocket and it came up with 60 teeth. So maybe I'll write that on there so that I don't have to count them again. How wide is this thing? Because I guess that's going to determine if we're going to be able to use it or not. If it's too wide, then it will hit the CV shaft. And so what do we got there? Let's go through the middle so we get a real measurement. About nine and nine and three quarter inches. So let's go make sure that we got enough clearance. So what I'm talking about here is the clearance between this yoke that currently drives our clutch and our transaxle 
and the CV joint here. You don't have a huge amount of room, so that's about the maximum that from there to there of a size of sprocket that we can use. So what do we got here? Say about five and a half to the CV boot. So that would be safe at five and a half. So that would be 10 total. So our sprocket can only be 10 inches total across. Yeah, so that sprocket should work. So let's, oh, my math working here? My math's not working here today, guys. Five and a half, five and a half, that's 11 inches. So let's write that on here. Decide which hand is gonna work today. 11 inches. is safe. Now I'll go measure that sprocket again. It was under 11 inches. So what I want to do is keep this yoke more or less intact. Put the sprocket on the inside here. That's bottom braid out in there. So we got three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna machine the inside of that sprocket out so it'll slide over there. I'm gonna use the strap bolt holes and just bolt it in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, because then we can always, if that sprocket's too big or too small or whatever, we can just unbolt it and take it off. Is that gonna work? You gotta have enough room for the bolts. Yeah, that should work. So let's snatch this yoke off of here. I know I didn't tighten it up very tight, but I still can't turn it by fit. There we go, okay. Yeah, I didn't tighten it up super tight when I put it together, so that's, I knew I was gonna be taking it apart again. lose any of our parts because they have a tendency to fall on the ground and get kicked into one of the piles of ground obtainium and never found again. Or found again and used on a different project. So what I was saying before is I'm going to turn the inside of that sprocket out to fit over top of here. Use these bolt holes that go through for the straps and bolt into that sprocket. Now, before we get any more carried away here and seeing how my math isn't seem to be mathing today, let's measure this again and make sure we're not doing something for nothing here. So yeah, from the outside to the center of that sprocket is five inches. So that makes our sprocket 10 inches total to the outside of the teeth. We need a little bit of room for the chain So yeah, we're just, that's gonna be probably the maximum size sprocket that we can put on that thing. That's kind of a weird fluke. Now we're doing this measuring crap all stupid and all wrong here. Let's just take this off the end. Put that on there like that and take a look. Yeah, we got lots of clearance. We got. We got a thumb width, that's perfect. And we're doing all this math and measuring and all this stuff. Just look at it and see if it's actually gonna work yet, dummy. Yeah, so it's obviously gonna work. Let's, let's put her in the lathe now and turn that out.
I got my whole board out there now. Now I should be able to stick this in there if I, yeah, that's nice and, nice and snug. Now I'll pull these straps out and drill through those holes into that sprocket, bolt it on there. Got a bunch of holes drilled in here now, and I do still have it tacked with a couple spot welds here. I'm gonna leave it tacked. There's no sense in taking it apart and, unless I have to change the sprocket. And I managed to find four bolts that are the right length. Sometimes that's the hardest part of building stuff around here is finding the hardware, because hardware ain't cheap. And I don't got giant wads of cash catapulting out of my butthole like the rest of the YouTubers that seem to be able to build this stuff. But stuff a bunch of bolts in here. I'm going to come in from the transaxle side with the bolts because the heads are thinner than the nuts. And I'm going to need the clearance in here. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm hoping that this is all going to going to clearance, going to clear. Maybe it might have to self-clearance, but we don't really like to do that. Looks like I actually drilled the right size holes for a change. Yes, I know I'm using an adjustable wrench. I don't really care. Well, I'm sitting here fumbling around with bolts. Maybe you guys could subscribe. And maybe one day I'll be able to afford to buy new hardware. Not that I will, but maybe I'll be able to afford to. Hit the like button too while you're at it. That kind of helps me out. I don't know how it helps me out, but they say it helps me out. I appreciate the comments more than anything, actually, because it kind of shows me that you guys are actually paying attention to what I'm doing, and that you got a bit of a brain in your head, and you're actually contributing to some of the ideas that I have. Tight enough for testing purposes. Let's go stick it back on the transaxle and yeah, see if it's gonna do what we need it to. So let's stick this thing on here and see if we have the clearance that we expected we were gonna have. Lots of room there. So. Let's see if those let's see if those bolts are clearing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we're just gonna leave this hand tight, and then we're gonna forget about it. And this is gonna walk off of here while we're driving it or testing it, and it's gonna screw everything all up. But yeah, we're just gonna leave it hand tight because. Because that's the way we roll. Okay, well, we got a sprocket on there now. Yeah, I think I'm going to go get one of those rototiller engines. Start out with one of those. Rototiller, snow blower. Don't really remember what it came off of. Actually, we'll, maybe we'll take the one off the old fart drift cart. If you guys are just coming to this channel now or just finding it, you should go back and check that project out. That was pretty fun, but... 
Yeah, the wife says the old fire drift cart after the uh, bouncing off the pavement is probably not such a good idea for an old fart. So yeah, we'll pull the motor off of that because we know it runs. We don't really have to screw around with it. And we'll put it on here. I couldn't find a piece of steel wide enough to build an engine plate out of. So I got these two pieces here. I'm just going to stick them together and see what kind of plate I can make out of this. I managed to find a bunch of different chains that, well, they're pretty much garbage, but I stuck them in the oil here and we'll let them soak for a little bit. See if we can at least get one to work enough that that we can test it with anyways. Cause like I say, I don't think this is gonna be the, the end all be all type idea here. Now I am sitting here looking at this thing. I probably created myself a bit of a problem by making both of my CB shafts the same length there. Cause if I move that transmission transaxle all the way over to one side, then I would have had a hell of a lot more room for engine combinations, but I can always put a jack shaft in and do all that kind of thing. But what I'm also thinking here is I have quite a few vertical shaft vertical this way motors around like lawn tractor engines I have a brand new one sitting in a box up there 20 horse engine that's never been used why can't I build a 90 degree gearbox come off of there 90 degrees and run a vertical shaft engine in there somewhere. I could probably put the engine right in the middle, come 90 degrees off of that transaxle, right down to, to the pulley. The pulley would come off like that. Now I'm gonna have the motor down in there. You could even probably put, if I do it right, I could probably put the motor in front. Well, no, because then you'd be sitting over the engine. Yeah, I could put it in the back there. So that there is another option. Thinking that might be a good option. If you guys want to see me attempt to build a 90 degree gearbox. I mean, I have a crap ton of garbage differentials up there that I'm sure I could pull the side gears or the spider gears out of. Have a nice 90 degree bevel gear. Build some type of gearbox out of. So if you guys want to see that, and see me put a larger, like, say, 20 horsepower engine in here. And leave some comments in the comment section. And, yeah, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, do all that cool YouTube stuff. Well, I'm going to stick this plate together now and see what i got to do to drill some holes and get it lined up in there just so that we can test this thing. Well, our engine plate is built. I cut some slots in here so the motor can slide back and forth. And I bolted it in so that when we decide that this engine isn't going to work, we can take it out. Managed to unstiffen one of those chains enough that I got it around there and made it the right length. So that's where our engine is sitting. So let's see if this thing's gonna fire up and see if we can find some gears. I don't have any of the shift linkage or anything hooked up and I'm not 100% sure on which way those levers gotta go to find, well, I can find third and fourth, I believe, just by moving the one lever, but yeah, let's, let's monkey, well, let's get it started up here and monkey around and see if we can find some gears. Looks like things are going roundy roundy and they're going to do their thing, so that's good. 
think I had first year there, or second year. I was grabbing the brake rotors to stop them, and that's what our steering is going to be, is with the brake rotors. I'm not going to 100% rely on these rotors. I'm also going to put brake rotors on the wheels, at least probably the front, maybe the back also. We'll come to that point when we come to that point, but yeah, that's cool. So I'm sitting here thinking, now that we have this thing so that it can go, now maybe we better figure out how we can get this thing to steer so that we can go where we want to go. We are using differential steering, differential braked steering. So when you lock up this wheel, that wheel is still powered. It's going to turn around this wheel. The, this side will stop, that side will keep going. Now, if I thought that there was going to be enough braking power with just the Robson drive, that's all I would go with. But like I said, I'm going to try to put brakes on at least one of the axles. I figure more brake is more better. And if for some weird reason we have some type of slippage or whatever on our Robson drive while we're rolling, well, at least we'll have brakes at the wheels to stop us. Now, I could go with the drum brakes that were originally on here, but they're huge, they're super heavy, and they're not, well, drums aren't kind of as reliable. Well, I guess they're reliable, they've been used forever, but they don't really grab quite as well as discs. Now, swapping all this one-ton stuff over to a disc conversion would be just ridiculous in price. Like it's not even something that I would consider unless I could build it myself, which I can. So by coincidence, my son has changed the rotors in his car not that long ago. And he kept the old rotors for me. You'll notice that they're five bolt and the hole ain't very big. So somehow we're going to have to get that 5 bolt to that 8 bolt and that hole fit over this and have that bolt pattern. You guys following along? Pretty sure you guys will probably be following along here and figuring it out here. Most of my subscribers are pretty intelligent and they probably build things like this themselves too, but they're probably not building something exactly like this. Anyways, yap, yap, yap. That's enough of that yapping. What are we going to have to do to get this rotor to fit on there? So what are we going to have to do here? I think the first thing we're going to have to do is fill in the holes. Because we need to drill different, well, we need to drill different bolt pattern here cast not really a nice thing to weld to but it's not really a big problem we're not yeah it's just an off-road vehicle it's, i wouldn't do ever think of doing this from something that was driving down the road never ever that's just that's that's about as dumb as dumb can get but for this application i think we should be safe so i'm going to weld these holes up first well first i'm going to clean all the never sees off here because that's Rows. Then I'm going to weld these holes up and we'll figure out how we're going to chuck this up in the lathe and turn the center hole big enough to fit over there. Here's a little trick for you guys. If you ever need to fill a hole in something with weld that you like, say you've drilled a hole in your project and it's not in the right place or whatever the deal is you need to fill up a hole with weld find yourself a block of aluminum or a scrap of aluminum just anything beer beer cans don't work but you, you know what i'm talking about a block of aluminum something like that stick it in behind your hole and just start filling it up with weld it gives you a backing on the to the hole so that all your your welding wire ain't just poking through and making a big huge mess on the backside. 
And because it's aluminum, it doesn't really stick to your weld. Like it'll stick a bit, but you just flip it over like that and give it a tap. It falls off and there you got your holes filled back up weld. Kind of works good. Just a little thing for you guys to think about. Got a couple more holes to fill up and there we go. Good to go. Well, we got all our holes filled up with weld here now. And what we need to do next is stick this in the lathe, turn this hole bigger around so that we can slide it over this hub. Once we get that to fit, then we can go from there. Now, you guys ever have one of those weeks where things just keep coming at you one after another, like like your excavator catches fire and by the time you get your excavator put out, you go in the house and start looking to see if you still got eyebrows and you hear a hissing noise and you realize that your plumbing's leaking, so you spend an hour underneath your house fixing your plumbing and then you climb back out and go to make yourself a sandwich and have a drink and realize that everything in the fridge is warm because well, the fridge is not refrigerating anymore, so you spend another hour screwing around with that, or maybe two, and then, well, you go to make yourself a cheese quesadilla, and you can't even get the bag of cheese to open for some reason. Yeah, it's been one of those weeks, guys, so we're going to stick this in the lathe. We're going to hope that the lathe behaves and everything works out okay, and that we can actually, well, get some work done that... Well, I guess all that other stuff is work, but it's not really the, the kind of work that we need to be getting done. So yeah, let's stop yapping. And in case you're wondering, I have no hair from the fire. So anyways, let's, uh, let's get this done. got our rotor board out here now. I took a nice finishing pass on here just to see how badly they were warped. And yeah, the kid had a bit of a right to be complaining about pulsating because they're about a 64th of an inch out, so it's quite a bit. Now, let's see if I measured properly and this is gonna fall in the hole here. Good and tight. Now well, I'm gonna take a drill bit and I'm gonna mark all these holes. Maybe if I got a bigger one here. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll start drilling some holes. The only trouble that I see here is there's not a whole lot of meat between the edge of this and where we're drilling the hole. So, not quite sure how we're gonna solve this issue. But, let's poke some holes in here and then we'll figure it out from there. Uh, let's see what we can do here. We have hit the wall in here, and that's probably what's snagging us, so I'm gonna have to do some some creative drilling, I think, to drill down through that wall. Probably gonna bind up quite a bit. Maybe we should 
tighten the bit up first. Well, maybe we should clamp this thing down here so it's not jumping around. Uh, I stuck some clamps on there now, so hopefully this thing is not going to jump around too much. I only got about maybe an eighth of an inch right down in here before it breaks through. So it's not, it's not much. It's just enough that it's grabbing the bit and making it not very fun. So. Yeah, see, it wasn't much at all. So now we'll grab a bolt and stick it in that hole. Now we can go around and drill the rest of them. Well, all our holes are drilled out here now and I've got some bolts dropped in it. That almost looks like it's gonna work. So I guess I'll have to build, well, I'll build one more for sure. Maybe, maybe three more. If we wanna put brakes on all the wheels, but one more for sure. But I think I'm going to have to leave this video here and go and deal with the uh, bailing wire and bicycle tube that I currently have wrapped around my plumbing before I end up with an indoor swimming pool. Well, maybe I want an indoor swimming pool. I guess I could throw my fridge into the indoor swimming pool and the fridge will warm it up because it's not cooling. So, yeah, enough with the whining. Until next time, guys, use what you got to make what you want, and I'll see you later.